Bible babes, welcome to another episode of California Preaching. Jesus is my rock. That's how I roll. Well, you guys, Vance, my son, 19 years old, is leaving for college tomorrow. Thank goodness he's only going 90 minutes down the road. It's emotional nevertheless. I'm going to miss his energy. I'm going to miss his... Mom, do you think you could make me a quesadilla? You know, like, Mom. Do you have 20 books? But at the same time, I'm so proud of the fact that he's excited and that he really feels like he's ready to live on his own and that he's ready to spread his wings and we're gonna cut the umbilical cord. I'm sure I'm gonna have a good cry about this. It hasn't happened yet. I know it's coming. I've got some holy notes here, you guys. It's been so long since I've had holy notes. I'm so excited. Listen, guys, I never say this, but I'm gonna say it today. Subscribe for the Jesus vibe. Yeah, so I don't know about you guys, but I experience a ton of agony and a ton of ecstasy when I pray and the reason for that when I do pray I feel ecstasy but before I pray I feel agony because for some reason it's just really hard for me to gear up for prayer and it's a muscle that I'm really trying to strengthen because I want to be that kind of prayer warrior that's like praying all day long and I've been getting better about it just kind of inviting Jesus into every moment of my life there's agony there the agony and ecstasy of prayer is mysterious mysterious. It is the highest activity of the human soul and yet to find ourselves alone with God there's a struggle to do what our soul yearns so deeply for. Intimacy with our Creator. And it's so true. I mean all of you guys I'm sure can relate to getting the willingness to pray and after you're like why didn't I do this like at the beginning of the day or why didn't I do this yesterday? Why haven't I been doing this all week long? It is absolutely mysterious. I can struggle to get there with God and yet all it is is a word away. Jesus, here's what's going on. Jesus, help me through this. You know, the enemy would love for me not to pray. The enemy would love for me to be, you know, tongue tangled. I buy into it. I just think, oh, you know, what's it really going to do? What's it really going to help? It, but every prayer shifts the atmosphere. Every single prayer makes the difference and matters. If I really want to enhance and grow my relationship with the Lord, I got to be talking to him. My forever boo is still in New York and I think we're going to rendezvous tomorrow in Los Angeles, which I'm really excited about because I genuinely miss my other half. Hey Cal Preach, what's going on? Just coming out of a visit with my mom, Mama Carol Baldwin, uh, the matriarch of the Baldwin clan. Oof. All the good and all the bad, you can give her half the credit. I <laughs> uh, just wanted to tell you that I just read again the Rolling Stone article on China and on Cal Preach. And China, I am so proud of you. They said that she created her own DIY Christian reality show. I give you all the credit, baby. Congratulations, amazing. And the Bible babes and all of you nearly 50,000 Cal Preach subscribers. Way to go. Awesome. Congratulations. All right. On the road with Billy B. I'll be dropping in with some chili bombs periodically. And uh, I miss you, China. I miss you guys. Chili bomb. I am going to be honest about something that is really embarrassing for me to be honest about, but I'm going to share it with you. So there's this person who will remain anonymous, who I love very much. I know very well, yet I have a really hard time praying for this person. It hurts to pray for this person. Please try not to judge. Don't be judgy. I'm trying my hardest just to be honest with you guys. This person is hard for me to pray for. It's hard for me to pray for this person's prosperity. It's hard for me to pray for this person's joy. It's hard for me to pray for this person's life to be blessed. And yet, I know if I just even ask God for the willingness to pray for this person. That's a step in the right direction. And I've been doing that. It's only hurting me. It's like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. So the other day I said, Lord, please just give me the willingness to pray for this person. And that's what I did. And then sure enough, the following day, 
I woke up and I went outside and I did my 30 minutes of dancing. You guys, I've been dancing ever since Christine Zabo told me that I should, you know, get out there and dance every morning for 30 minutes. I just put on my favorite music and just dance and praise God and talk to Jesus and pray for the fruits of the Spirit on my life. And what do you know? I prayed for this person and I meant it. I said, Lord, Pour your prosperity and your riches and your goodness onto this person, Lord. And it didn't feel difficult. It didn't feel like a struggle. I did it. It felt so good. And of course, surprise, surprise, what do you think happened? I felt free and I received a blessing from being able to bless somebody else that I had trouble praying for. He loves to pour his blessings and his goodness out onto us when we come to him like little children. So why did God create us? He is already perfect. Why does he need us to share his love with us? It made me feel so good to know, because I mean, we're told all the time, you know, worship God, praise God. And of course, worshiping and praising God is of ultimate importance in the walk with the Lord, but that God put us here to love us. It is like a healing salve on my body, mind, and soul when I remind myself that God put me here so that he could pour his love out onto me and love me. Prayer is immensely powerful and I feel like especially when you look at a country like Afghanistan and everything that's going on there right now, just how terrifying and cruel and how scary. Guys, as a community, us Bible babes, let's all make a commitment to pray for Afghanistan. Make that a commitment to yourself to pray for that country, okay? Because they really need our prayers right now. I need to let go of my legalistic self. I need to let go of my need for perfection. God doesn't expect perfection from me. Actually, his strength is made perfect in my weakness. When I can admit that I'm weak, when I can admit that I need his help, when I can come to the throne broken and just, you know, humbled and submitting to his authority and saying, I haven't got this, I don't know what to do in this situation, but you're God and I trust you, that's amazing. And I heard a great quote and the quote was, forgiveness is wisdom, forgetting is genius. Let's remind ourselves of that quote. I'm actually going to make that one of my t-shirts for the drop that's happening in September, I'm gonna have a new merch drop in September with lots of cool new one-liners and um, we're gonna do caps this, this time. We're gonna have some new sweatpants. It's gonna be great. Yay! You know, to be honest with you, some of my views have been down on YouTube and my subscribership has been slow. And I think that that's kind of playing with my head a little bit and making me feel like maybe this has run its course and all of that. And I know it's just, Satan just, you know, try, it's the accuser, just trying to make me feel like what I'm doing isn't really making an impact or isn't entertaining or, you know, uh, nobody cares. <laughs> it's like, ah, uh... like I said, you know, really take that to the cross. I mean, I really did when I was dancing this morning, I was like, Lord, I give you my YouTube channel and <laughs> Lord, I give you Afghanistan and I give you my fears of Vance living on his own. The Lord just keeps telling me, China, turn your worries into prayers. Every time I start to worry, I'm just trying to turn it into a prayer. I just want to be like a heat seeking missile for prayer. We can pray in every situation. When is there ever a situation that we can't pray? It just doesn't exist. There's always a situation where we can pray. This is a fake candle, by the way, so don't worry about me burning myself. I lack the ability to forward all issues to heaven. It feels like agony, the idea of praying, but gosh, when I do it m more often, I just go, wow, this is actually beautiful, making me feel so much closer to God. Yesterday, I was just having one of those days where I was like, everything just kind of kept going wrong. And I guess because I'm so 
I was so steeped in new age stuff when I was in my early 20s that sometimes I think like, oh, it's bad karma. And then I catch myself and I'm like, China, no, karma is getting what you deserve. But in Christianity, Jesus got what we deserved. Jesus got it on our behalf. Grace is the opposite of karma. In Christianity, we have grace. In New Age, it's like karma, you get what you deserve. But in Christianity, Jesus took what we deserved on the cross. I, I just wanna remind myself when things don't go my way, when I feel like I can't hold on for one more day, <laughs> it's like, Chai, you are not being punished. It's life on life's terms. It's what happens. My bells, you guys. Take a holy break. And sometimes I mix up faith and I think that faith means that I, everything's going to turn out just right, all right. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to turn out the way I want it to turn out. That's having faith and that's absolutely not having faith. Faith is knowing that when things don't turn out the way I want them to, which is often that I'm going to manage with God, that God is there for me, that, that I'm not alone that I have a savior, I have a Lord, I have a God, a father that loves and cares for me and will help me navigate through that time. And the question is, do I truly believe that I've been forgiven? Do I truly trust in the covering of blood that Jesus shed for me on the cross? China, do you really believe that you're forgiven? I definitely struggle with that in believing that God loves me because I feel like I don't pray enough. I feel like I don't read the Bible enough. I feel like I don't you know, have enough Christian friends. I feel like I don't minister enough or I don't, I, you know me, I've told you this for years. I, I sometimes feel like I'm a counterfeit Christian. It's ridiculous because um, that in and of itself is like a sin. It's a sin to not trust in what Jesus did for us on the cross. And of course, of course the accuser is going to make me feel like I'm a less than Christian. I'm so sick and tired of it. Like I am so sick and tired of that old tape, but I don't know if that'll ever go away. But when God casts your sin into the ocean, don't go fishing for it like I do. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I'm guilty of that. So here's a beautiful holy note for all of us, but I think especially for those who are just, you know, starting the walk. God does not begin by asking us about our ability, but only about our availability. What is your availability today with God? What's my availability today with God? I just keep reminding myself to have that ease with G's, you know, it's easy, but the devil would like me to believe that it's super complicated. A, B, C of the gospel, all because Christ. I can pray all because Christ. I can be joyful all because Christ died for me. The gospel is so simple. It is so simple. I can experience peace today all because Christ died on the cross. Listen guys, God makes it really clear in his word that he has one answer to every human need. And that answer is his son, Jesus Christ, is the answer to everything. Invite him in and please pray for Afghanistan. Peace of Christ. Bye guys. Hey you guys, if this video blessed you in any way, I pray that you will subscribe and I also pray that you'll press that little button next to the subscribe because that is an alert button and it will give you a notification every single time there's a brand new Cal Preach. And of course, share because sharing is caring and you just never know who's gonna find the peace of Christ.